we go. Now, say cheese. So you're always behind the camera. We're always talking about you behind the camera. So now we had to put you in front of the camera. <laughs> well, that was a surprise. <laughs> At least give me a minute to get ready. Oh, that's okay. I had to get my hair ready. <laughs> I had to grow my bangs out. You're having a great hair day, John. I think so. I think so. <laughs> I freshly shaved just for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. How, <laughs> how excited are we for today? Oh, today is going to be amazing. We both have known this woman for a long time. Well, I have, and you've known her short, but it probably seems like a long time. It does seem like a long time with everything that we've done together. Yeah. It's one of those things where you guys got together and then it's like you knew each other forever. Ah, uh, for sure. For sure. Exactly. And I was lucky enough to know her back when we were first starting out in this industry. Back when I did have hair, probably as long as yours, although <laughs> I think I cut it by then. It was short. I had hair, but it was short. I love it. Well, bring her out. Bring Who are we in? talking about here? All right. So let's bring her. She is your editor-in-chief of both Bodyscape and Epic Fit Magazine, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. So we're going to bring her in, Miss Carrie Lee Brown. Carrie Lee Brown! Hi! There hey, she John. is. Yes. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. Carrie. Thank you we were... so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your podcast. Two of my favorite people in the fitness world and in life. Thank you. This and is all your fault, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this we is have... my, my trouble spot, bringing you guys together. I don't know yeah. what kind of shenanigans you guys are getting up to on the show, but thanks for having me as a guest. Thank you for being here. And yeah, we definitely have you to blame for this, but in all the, in all the good ways. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, she keeps trying to get me to get my passport ready to go. Cause she wants me coming on some of these epic destination shoots. So just saying, you got to see it to believe it. You got to do right, a pit stop in Denver, John, on your way. Yeah, we will on the way. Although if it's in Miami, you, maybe you can meet us there too. And you can come. Yeah. Been wanting to happen that way for a long time, for sure. Mm -hmm. There you go. You write the articles, he'll take the pictures, I'll hold a reflector or something. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, they don't want me doing the hair or the makeup or anything, that's for sure. No. No, probably I'll, not. I'll take some behind-the-scenes photos for everybody. That's that would be a good flow, for sure. But, Carrie, thank you for joining us. We're excited Yay. to have you here. There's so much to talk about. You and John have so much history. And um, I'd like to kind of deep dive into that. Like, first of all, how you all met and then how you brought John and I together and how all of this is unfolding now. So let's, let's just get started. I think it's like serendipity, isn't it? It's like everything here has happened for a reason. I feel like, wow, John, we go way back. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. dating myself here, but like we're talking about 15 years ago now working at Muscle Mag and Oxygen. Actually more than that. More than that, more than that. Yes, actually. 1998, I believe, is when you started, and I was already there from 1992. Yeah, I wasn't trying to put that many years on me, but yes, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, but the difference is you still look like you could be still that same age. I'm the one that's yeah, aged, so. You're so sweet. Um, but yeah, honest. I mean, John was, wow, did he do a lot around the Muscle Mag offices. He was always cheerful. It was always coming in to say hi when I was running Oxygen Women's Fitness, and when I, I launched um, American Health and Fitness, remember that, John? Yeah. Um, under Bob Kennedy's reign as well. And man, we had such great times back then. We met so many really great people in the industry. I got to schmooze with a lot of them at events. John went to a lot of events. And, you know, we just really became good friends. I remember going for lunch with you all the time mm -hmm. and just really connected. I mean, John's always been a great connector and he's always been the life of the party. And, so I know that's probably why we really got, you know, we got along very well. So, um, but yeah, we go way back. We, go yeah, way we used to go for a Swiss chalet all the time for lunch on, on our lunch break there when we moved to the newer offices. And yeah. it's funny because my birthday was a couple weeks ago and Carrie wished me a happy birthday. And she's like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, I think my wife and kids were just going out for dinner. She goes, you didn't go to Swiss chalet? I'm like, no, we'll wait, <laughs> we'll wait till Carrie and I get together and then we'll go to Swiss chalet. So. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what Swiss chalet is, it's a restaurant chain in Canada that is amazing and chicken for days and everybody goes to Swiss chalet. It's kind of like a tradition like Tim Hortons is. So mm -hmm. I go there every time I go home too. And uh, obviously I hang out with John a lot more during work and when I lived in the Toronto area. And now that I live in Denver, Colorado, but John and I are still connected. And, you know, I'm just so glad to have connected you guys to, and you got, you know, Sarah, you have a vast background in the health and wellness industry, of course. And 
you know, I just thought you guys would be great together, being both photographers, being people in, you know, who want to get out there and share their beautiful message and to create, you know, beautiful visuals of, of all these beautiful bodies and people who have stories. So I'm glad it worked. Yeah, I'm just so grateful for that time that you put into trying, because I know it was kind of an off the top of your head thought one day when you and I were talking and you're like, I'll put an email together for you guys. And so you would introduce us via email and, you know, John and I softly connected, but then it was like, we were more Facebook friends, I think, than mm -hmm. email friends, right? So um, I started watching John's page, John started watching mine and kind of familiarizing herself himself a little bit more with what I do with, you know, just the photo shoots, not even Epic Destination shoot, but the fact that you are involved, I think is what kind of launched him to be a little bit more um, paying attention to what I'm doing, right? So at the end of the day, um, you know, time passes and I see John's Butler's Babble podcast happening and he's messaging me like, hey, check out my show. And so I had checked out his show and then I thought, you know what? I've got the epic destination shoots coming up and I'm trying to think of different ways to market this big shoot that's coming up in October. Cause I learn from every shoot that I plan, right? Like what could I have done different? And it's always with the marketing. It's always with the marketing. So what I wanted to do was be interviewed by John on his podcast for Butler's Babble without really understanding the pretense of what his podcast was all about. Well, as it turns out, the Butler's Babble podcast wouldn't have been a good fit for me and the Epic Destination shoots, right? So we kind of paused for a sec. And I think that conjointly, we were both like, well, why don't we set up our own little podcast and we talk sure. about the Epic Destination shoots and things that are going on? So that's how this unity was formed. Exactly. All through Carrie. <laughs> well, I it told just, her, I said, I have the platform with my Butler's Babble that I can do different type of podcast so why put you on there that doesn't fit your thing or fit what Butler's Babble was right let's make our own and how can we do this and then I just said why don't we have it sponsored by Bodyscape and talk yeah. about Epic Destinations get everybody involved with what the Epic Destinations are and we can put our own podcast and I'm sure we've got tons of people we can talk to so, oh, um, so. It, it just worked out perfectly yeah so grateful for this on set with Sarah and John. And that's what it is. We're on set. We talk about being on set. John talks about his set from, you know, now until like from way back then until now with his studio that he's functioning with now. I've got, this is my studio, Carrie. Do you remember this little space? I love that space. I yeah. have so many memories there. You see the chandelier I put up there and like yeah. the whole thing. I love that chandelier. I it's love totally your different. ears, and I know you're doing the boudoir stuff now too. There, yeah. I mean, amazing, Sarah. Like you've done a, such a great job in setting up your studio. I was so envious when I was there. I was like, this is the perfect workspace to, for you to do your magic, for people to feel comfortable when they go to there to shoot with you. I got to experience it all, which was great. Do it, yeah, new. yeah, it was great. It's a small really? space, but we make it work. You know, yeah. they call me the queen of small spaces, so I'll take it. <laughs> and it's funny because. Sarah came up with the name uh, on set, came out of her head. And I said, okay, well, what if we do on set with John and Sarah? And she's like, yeah, let's do it. And then as I was making up the logo, I thought, why put my name? This is all about Bodyscape and Epic. Why not put her name first? So we put her name first instead. And it just seemed to click. So I'm waiting for her to do uh, Epic Destination Shoot of Carrie Lee Brown. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> funny. We've talked about that. It'll happen one day. One day when I'm ready and have some time. <laughs> to focus on my you know Listen, yeah we've been there. letting carrie go on her ride because that ride was coming and it is well deserved carrie's on the <laughs> ride right now that she has deserved for a very long time like we've had endless chats about where yeah. her goals are and what her dreams are and what she wants to achieve in the world of publishing in the magazine world and as a freelance writer and every gift that she has to bring to the table is now Mm -hmm. unfolding and it's coming to fruition for this wonderful human and i am so happy for you <laughs> i've told you that i'm like get it girl do it like just do i know it. and you know i'm a huge believer and even just the way our like the trinity of us three have stayed connected and now i'm doing more and more professionally with both of you yeah um, i think it's like everything happens at its own time i believe i really do believe in that and in regards to me doing a bigger shoot with Sarah, that is on my bucket list because I really want to. Mm -hmm. um, 
But, you know, my 50th birthday is coming up around the corner. So you never know what will happen. Yeah. You'll never know what will happen in the next six to eight months. You never never know. But, yeah. I mean, I really want to do it. I, I practice what I preach. And I have my own, as you know, my business, my journalism business, my magazine stuff that I do. And I still feel like Sarah's photos would really add to my personal branding. And, mm -hmm. you know, my websites and everything that I do myself. And I really do. So it's definitely on my bucket list. But right now, my priority is getting other people to be able to share their stories and shoot in front of you as well. So that's what I have on my uh, my wish list anyway. Well, your Red Lily Life platform has really taken off where you yes. offer people a storytelling platform also. It's, it's in a digital format and um, you work with a lot of triumph to tragedy type mm -hmm. stories, triumph to tragedy type people. And speak on that. Speak on what your Red Lily Life platform is. Is yeah, really so I mean, for those of you who don't know me, I mean, I've worked in media and journalism for 20, going on 25 years now, over 20 anyway, since my days at Muscle Mag, <clears throat> my first job out of, out of, you know, journalism school was the assistant editor of Muscle Mag. And I got, you know, gosh, wrapped up into the world of bodybuilding and fitness and wellness and health and beautiful bodies and, and beautiful souls. And so since then, I've worked in a ton of different magazines and you know, I've even published my own book out of my own story about heart health. And, you know, there's more of that stuff to come from me as well. But at the end of the day, I'm a content uh, creator and content producer. And, you know, redlilylife.com, which is my women's storytelling platform, which, by the way, there's my book. Yay! That's my book. <laughs> um, yeah. And I mean, it just kind of evolved out of the fact that I love storytelling. I love people being able to share their stories in the written format because, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, look, he's even pulling up. That's Red Lily. That's Red Lily Media. That's my one website, my uh, my business where I do all my content through. Um, but I just really wanted to share a platform and create a platform for women and men to share their vulnerabilities, really. I mean, that's what it's all about is sharing your vulnerabilities, being able to, you know, there it is. Um, get your message out there in a, in, a, in a glorified way, which, you know, not a lot of people want to do their own website or their own blog or write a book. Right. So this was a really easy way for them to submit a story to me with no judgment and for me to lightly edit it and I will post it. And I still today, without much marketing, because I don't have a lot of time, but I do try whenever I can be a, like a guest on podcasts or whatever, um, I do try to promote the fact that, you know, this is an all welcome kind of website where any story can be published. I just go through it lightly with editing for voice and grammar. And then, you know, I do what I can. And I do this website all myself too. So just like you, Sarah, with your magazines and your platforms and your photo shoots, you know, we're like one woman shows, right? We, we are entrepreneurs. Oh. And I just love it because it's so gratifying to know that what I put out there is all my doing. And then helping other women and men, like I said, put out their stories or their missions or their messages just means the world to me. And so to that point, I've always looked at Red Lily as my passion project, but there'll be more coming out on those platforms soon to be able to serve, you know, people who are who want tools in publishing, who want tools and content from me on how to pitch editors at magazines, um, courses, uh, course creation. There's a lot kind of coming down the hopper. And so I just have to get all my my, you know, my to do's in line. And that is more of the stuff that's coming on, on, on the, basically the next couple of months. You're such a badass. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have my day job. <laughs> yeah. So, talk about yeah. that. Your new day job. This is amazing. Yeah. See, the problem is she wrote this book teaching herself how she's got to slow down. I know. That's I why know, she wrote right? the book. And then when her, when I had her on my I have podcast, a Gary. she was editing three different magazines at the time. And that's before she was even doing yours. And uh, it's I like, you've got to slow down. <laughs> well, it's so funny. I just did a speaking gig in New York last week and to a women's group called Global Women. And all these entrepreneurs in that were listening to me talk about my book and talk about different ways that I've learned to balance, you know, work and life and, and all my passion projects. And I do, I, what I said to them, I said this very same thing. I said, you know, I have to practice what I preach. So I have to keep going back to my book and rereading it, but it's okay as well. I mean, sometimes we need those like little reminders or those nudges to, you know, basically listen to what we're, we're kind of coaching out there. And yeah. well, I, I've come to a point where I'm okay with that, that I'm not, Certainly not perfect. I certainly need to slow down 
as well and think about what I love to do and think about, you know, the boys and my, my two kids and family life. But also part of me, I've come to the conclusion, just like you, Sarah, and you too, John, but what I do for a living and what I do is what I love. So really slowing down on work sometimes isn't as gratifying to me. So I love doing it and it, it, it fills my cup. So, yeah. you know, I mean, you guys are like that too. We just love what yeah. we do. Just a matter of finding balance. A, yeah. And I had a thought that I was going to start slowing down on these Epic Destination shoots last year until I got in front of my crew in South Florida and they looked at me like I had three eyeballs. Like, why would you sit <laughs> down now? You are silly. Don't even get that thought in your mind. You're just getting started. You're just ramping up, right? Like I'm 51. I want to enjoy time, you know, with my husband and all that. Thank God. I'm so blessed that he is such a supporter of me being busy. Yeah. Carrie, you've met him. Like he, he's the same kind of way, right? Like he loves being busy. He loves lifting what I'm doing. And so if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to be as effective at the things that I love doing, right? Because it is, it's a passion project. More than, more than half of it is just because I love doing what I do. Yeah. And that's the thing too. And I, I do talk about that with people who come to me for coaching or, or come to me and say, Hey, how can I get published in a magazine or, or my story told? And I think it is really about your brand, I think is illuminated through who you are and what you do and how much passion you have for it. And I, I'm like living proof of that. And so are you guys. Like, if you love it, then you will spend more time at it because you want to get it to the next level. You want to push your, you know, challenge yourself and push yourself. So all of these different things that I do on the day to day from, you know, the running the magazine during the day and then helping Sarah with her magazines and, you know, um, coaching calls and writing books and all this stuff. It does. It is a lot, but I love it. And if I really didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I just right. think that there's so many people out there now that are stuck in day jobs or stuck in jobs that they're just not happy with. And then it becomes very stressful. And even though stress levels certainly catch up on me, they do. But I think that if I didn't have my profession and what I love to do by sharing people's stories, then I, I don't know where I'd be. I really don't. I mean, this is what I've been doing my whole career and my whole basically my whole adult life. Um, and that's why I love, you know, working with you, Sarah, on your magazines, because, you know, interviewing all of the cover models and all of the people that you bring to the table and um, we work with, I mean, it just, like I said, it fills my soul to, to bring their stories to life through words. Um, and I, I, I like to think that that's my kind of give back or my talent. One hundred percent. I can help people, you know, just like you and you, you both with your photography I mean, put a you know a photo in my hands that I, I would never take as great of photos as you guys. Um, but then the same thing, like some people will say, you know, I'm the one with the, the you know, the my pen is like my magic wand, I've been told. Right. That's your camera is your pen. 100%. Your, your yeah. pen is your camera. Well, maybe with that, John, in. we can go into that video. Uh, I was just about to do that. Actually. Yeah, thank you. Go to the commercial. <laughs> I'm just thinking that. works now, Carrie. So she's been <laughs> bugging me to write a book for a long one time. Mind. Perfect. <laughs> She's been bugging me to write a book for a long time, and I, I have. haven't gotten that. And me to it too. Yet. I know. I, I know. have. <laughs> we'll get there. So we'll go to this commercial here, and then we'll come back, and maybe when we come back, we'll talk about what Carrie does for Bodyscape and uh, with uh, the Fit Magazine, Epic Fit Magazine, and you guys can talk a bit more about your collaboration there. Perfect. So we'll be back right after this. Did you know that social media marketing makes up over 80% of how brands and businesses are discovered these days? We're always looking for ways to stand out in a crowd amongst so many millions of scrolling viewers, but what's gonna really get a viewer to stop? I'm gonna say a magazine cover. I always stop when I see magazine covers, and that is definitely one way to up-level your business and brand to gain instant recognition. Magazine covers give you instant credibility and draws curiosity to your audience, makes them want to know more about you and your brand. Magazines have always had kind of a different impact in the way that your image is perceived. It's kind of like, wow, I finally made it. And a lot of people think that that's unattainable, but that's not really the case. By producing Bodyscape Magazine and Epic Fit Magazine, I've created a format where we can book you on the cover of an established fitness and wellness magazine 
and offer you the opportunity to tell your story all at the same time. The way that these magazines are formatted is to tell your story through my camera on the beautiful color pages of Boxgate Magazine. Your story can be anything from tragedy to triumph, to branding your business, to you just wanted to do a magazine shoot to have fun, or just to celebrate a monumental milestone that's just taken place in your life. My editor, Carrie Lee Brown, will reach out to you individually and interview you according to your photo spread and the story that you wanna tell. So it makes a really fun opportunity for you to be on the cover of a very reputable fitness and wellness magazine while telling your story to the world. In turn, we share your story. We put it on all of our platforms. We put it on the websites. And it's just an amazing experience to have this for yourself. Like, wow, I did that. I landed the cover of a magazine and I never thought that I'd be able to. So if you see yourself here and this is something that you're interested in, then we deserve to talk. So reach out directly to me at picturegroovephotography at gmail.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in front of my lens and on the cover of Bodyscape Magazine or Epic Fit Magazine. There it is. Hey. Tells it all. <laughs> it really does. Really was, does. So now we can go home then. We don't need to be here. We can just go home now. I know. Drop the mic. <laughs> off, off my strainer. Let's go. <laughs> so tell us more about you two together, your collaborations, how you decided, like, Carrie, I'm hiring you. You're going to do this. Well, Carrie was brought into my world probably three years ago. Um, and I, I had remembered you from the oxygen days and, and things like that. And I just thought, you know, it's time to make a change. It's time for me to stop writing articles in my own magazine because I'm not a journalist. I'm a photographer. And, you know, it's it's a stretch to be a photographer and a publisher at the same time. So trying to understand what works best for the rhythm of the magazines, you know, I, I, I felt like I was definitely maxed out and needed to bring in an industry professional at that time. And Carrie just so happened to be that blessing that was dropped right in front of me, literally, like she was the angel that came in and saved the day. So um, it, it was just, it really took Bodyscape Magazine to a different level. And this was, Carrie had attended a shoot that I was doing with Dr. Sarah Guelli, who is a um, multiple sclerosis survivor. And I think she was the cover of like issue number 12 or something like that. Um, but we did these photos of Carrie on that shoot because she needed to get some new image shots of herself. And I think that they're just beautiful. She's so stunning and she knows how to work a camera. She's spent her time on sets and knows exactly how to work her angles. And um, she's just stunning, beautiful stuff. Thank we you. actually, yeah, no, for sure. And we got a cover, uh, a billboard on yeah. Times Square. Right. That was. Yeah. That was That's something. one I'll have to share with you, John, actually. My, my yeah. cover on the billboard. Yeah. Yes, you will. I remember you telling me about it, but I don't know if I ever saw it. Yeah. I was shocked. And I mean, I just think that's what the magic that Sarah brings to the table is that when she approached me about helping edit her magazines and do these interviews and I had, you know, I'm used to interviewing a lot of, I've interviewed celebrities and fitness celebrities, but also Hollywood celebrities. And I still did do today. Um, but what I love so much about these publications in particular, even versus ones I've worked for in the past and ones I work for currently, is that Sarah's so open about anyone being able to do this. Like anyone could be in her magazines if they, you know, they contact her and do what they need to do to get there. But I think that that's the openness of her heart shining through in her magazines. And I mean, I, that's what I was really drawn to as well. So not just Sarah as a person and her talent, but also the fact that, you know, she has a real heartfelt mission there. And that that is what I aligned with because I do too on my end, but mine's just through words and, you know, speaking on different topics and, and Sarah's is through her photography. So I've always been a print girl at heart too. I mean, my love is magazines. Yeah. Um, even though we live in a digital world these days and I, you know, I, I appreciate that too, but Print and having something in your hands once it's yes. printed is always so amazing. And any opportunity that anyone has to be in this magazine is great because they can show it to their friends, their family. They can, you know, promote themselves online and even leave it as a legacy piece for their families down the road or their boyfriends or husbands or whatever, um, you know, to say, hey, this was me like 10 years ago, you know, on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. Um, 
is always great to have too. So I don't know. I think we'll probably always work together in some capacity. And right now I just enjoy doing these, these, you know, interviews and overseeing the, you know, the content and we go through the production schedule and we, you know, I, I basically give my eyes and my professional kind of opinion on design as well. When Sarah works on that with a designer and it just really flows. I think it's easy yeah. and it, I think it's just because we connect in that way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I need to give a shout out to our designer, Raj, yes. who is so far behind the scenes. You guys never see him. He's just a wonderful human being. And yeah. Raj and I have kind of developed this uh, template that's a very flexible template. Don't you think, Carrie? Like it's, it's it changes every time, but like I can just give him the thought and he just knows how to roll with it. And he's been with me since the very first edition of Bodyscape back in 2018. So we're very <laughs> fortunate to have him on and Carrie can communicate with him now in a way that's very open. And um, there's a language barrier. There's, there's, you know, there's always little obstacles to overcome, but he has done an amazing job and I can't ever see doing this without him involved. Like if it wasn't going to be him, I wouldn't do it anymore. Honestly. He's yeah, such a great guy. I agree with you. I think Raj is wonderful. He's, it's always nice. So I've worked with a lot of creative directors in my day at various magazines, um, lots and lots. And sometimes there's a disconnect with creative directors and editors because yes. <laughs> you have a different background. One yes. is of the written word and one is of course a visual and how things look. Um, one of the biggest things I always have hated is as a writer, I'm a long writer. So when I do articles or, 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 um, stories and then the creative director of the designer if they come back and say you know this photo i want bigger so you have to cut your your uh word length it just kills me inside because that's my <laughs> I love. but with that's Raj, not what i'm trying to tell you <laughs> yeah with Raj, he never does that he's so amazing to work with no, he's great he'll figure he's out how to format without... the whole thing around yeah. what you want to convey exactly and he will just do you know he has some great ideas and then he'll just also collaborate so I think that's one of the biggest things about Raj and even our little, you know, our group that puts these magazines together. We're just on the same page. Good. Excuse yeah. the pun. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same page about a lot of things. And I think that's kind of why it works. So, well, yeah. The one so, thing I love about the magazine is it is not just a digital. It is a physical magazine yes. that you can get because yeah. those are going on the far side anymore, which there's not a lot of them doing it. And I think nowadays it's a lot easier, too, because... If Carrie remembers when we started back in the 90s, there was no computers that were just coming out near the end of it. So we had probably like, what, six or seven graphic designers that sat in offices, two to an office with drafting tables, and everything was done in front with X-Acto knives, and you'd have to get yep. the typesetting done, bring it over, cut it, put it, go into the dark room, print out a black and, or it was like a negative of the shot you want to use. They had to glue that yep. onto Fancy. it. Yeah, well, it wasn't even that. It was actually, on, it was printed on in a dark room on a paper and they had to stick it on there, but they would send that designs away with the actual transparencies or whatever to the publisher or printers to get them done. You had to make a magazine about three to four months in advance to have it come out. So a lot of times when the magazines would come out, a lot of the news that was in it was probably like three years old or three months old and people knew some of that stuff already. Whereas yeah. you guys, you guys can now pump them out nice and fast. Carrie can go get her article done, send it to him. He can design it and you guys can have it up and running in no time. So it's, it's a big advancement, I think, for this. That is a true statement. And I, I would not have fared well in the magazine business with my limited knowledge of how to even start to put a magazine together in the first place. It's a good <laughs> thing that I decided to do this in this digital age because I would, I don't know. I mean, with all that all those publishing, like yeah. everything that went into publishing Muscle Mags and Bob, all these, all these other magazines, it was a lot and it required a lot of people, a lot of equipment, a lot of help. So well, I don't I, Harry remembers the story that Bob Kenny, I told Sarah this before that when he first started his magazine in the late sixties or whatever it was, he had got it all designed. He did it right out of his uh, kitchen with Johnny Fitness, if I'm not mistaken, they did it right out of their kitchen and they sent it out, got it printed and forgot to get a distributor. And he didn't realize it until one day a knock on his kitchen door happens and all these skids of boxes came into his kitchen. He had no way of getting rid of them. And I remember <laughs> him telling me that story. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I can just imagine the chaos because now he's got thousands of magazines sitting in boxes here. What does he do with them? 
he had to get them out to the public somehow. Yeah. And that's how it has changed because now, I mean, as Sarah knows, you can, you know, with an e, e version of the magazine, as well as like a digital version, as well as the print, you have many, many more options to distribute, but also to share like on social yeah. media, on your website, to post it. If you're on the mag, you know, there's so many different ways to do it versus back then you had a hard copy. And if it went off the newsstands, you better like, you know, make sure that you had that hard copy because you may not be able to get another one. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more different, um, a lot of more advancement, of course, in the publishing world, but also it's good because there's a lot more reach, you know, like a digital publication can stay online forever. And yeah. so I think that's where the world of journalism and magazines has gone. So it's, it's really has, evolved in a great way um but yeah i remember all those days back there at the light table looking at you know all the slides we used to call them and all the pictures and, you know like looking through the like the like the lens thing and yeah crazy, the filing but, cabinets um, that were all in that office up against the wall where you had to go alphabetical order and find the pictures that you wanted to yeah. use alphabetically through a, a filing system yeah and hey i tell you what i have so many of those photos from back in the day because uh, when I resigned from, um, you know, uh, Robert Kennedy Publishing and I went on to corporate for a while before I went back to magazine world, um, I took a lot of those photos of me and, and the ones I had had with my celebrity friends and everything. And I have a lot of those slides. I'll have to share them with you guys sometime. But I have well, a lot I probably of those. have some here of you that I took of you at your house back in uh, in Canada. Probably. There. After, after yeah. the next commercial, I'll have to find see if I can find them here and hold them up for everybody. Yeah, for sure. And I, yeah, I'll have to send you guys some. But yeah, I mean, that's the way the world has gone now in magazine publishing. And I mean, I, you know, we still do work in advance. I mean, it's not an overnight process. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, there's work that goes into, you know, both magazines for Sarah, and yeah. you know, some planning, of course, planning on Sarah's end, that's what a publisher does. And, you know, right from the beginning of the touching base with the potential um, cover model or the talents to her doing the big shoots as well, the epic fit to, uh, destination shoots. I mean, that is months in advance. So really mm -hmm. that, when you look at it from start to finish, it is several months. But mm -hmm. um, but to your point, we have a you know, well-oiled machine now and we have it down to a science and, and I'm really proud of the work that we do. And Sarah's, yeah. you know, the brain's behind it all really. So I have to thank you for bringing me on board for sure. Oh, thank you for being here. Believe me, it would not be the same without you. <laughs> so why don't we go to another commercial here quickly? We'll talk about the contest. But on top of that, when we come back to end the show, why don't we talk about the future of Bodyscape with the two of you and what you both have plans for on upcoming issues. You don't have to spill beans or anything, but give us a little bit more about the future of Bodyscape and Epic Fit and then the Epic Fit destination shoots too. We'll do it. All right. We'll be right back. Did you know that you can win your travel expenses paid for on the next Epic Destination shoot in South Florida? All you have to do is get your shoot book no later than September 1st, 2023. On September 5th, I'll be going live from all my social channels announcing the winner of Round Trip Airfare, Round Trip Uber Transportation Fare from the airport and back to the airport, and also two nights hotel at our wonderful host hotel in Hollywood, Florida. I'm so excited to see you there. So if you want more information, head to EpicDestinationShoot.com for all the details. I mean, I get goosebumps every time I see that because I could just I do imagine too. And I just, how I happy just, somebody's going to be winning that. I just need to give another shout out to Tony Swan. Carrie, you've worked with him yep. on set before. Tony Swan from Swan Dive video productions here in Phoenix. He, to, to me, he's the best of the best. Like he turned those videos over to me and I did not have to make any changes to them at all. He just understands what it feels like to be in my shoes and he understands the branding and the business. So yeah, there is a giveaway. There is definitely a giveaway and you've got to get your shoots booked by September 1st in order to be included in the giveaway, which includes obviously round trip airfare, round trip Uber fare and two nights hotel at our host hotel in Hollywood, Florida, which is the Costa Beach Resort in beautiful Hollywood, Florida. And it's beachfront. We get to shoot on property at the hotel. The hotel rates are super reasonable. So even if you're not doing the contest and you book a little bit later on, uh, we've got amazing rates at that hotel in a great location that's nice and easy, nice and chill. Not a lot of South Beach craziness, <laughs> which is what I was trying to avoid from last time I was there, which was, oh my gosh, it was a total hairdo. 
when I was there last time, but Hollywood, Florida, we're trying it and it's going to be amazing and have a bunch of different shoot locations set out for um, not just Bodyscape and Epic Fit, but other major, major magazine titles, which I will reveal more on later, but I'm super excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us more about the future of Bodyscape and Epic Fit and the Sarah Carey connection. Oh gosh, it's it's just going to continue to roll. I mean, Bodyscape is always awesome. I love doing Bodyscape content because it's really, it's kind of like health and beauty meets fashion and wellness. There's really no size expectation for the models that book a cover of Bodyscape at all. It's just kind of like, you know, we take the people that seem to make the most sense for that publication. And Epic Fit is definitely, you know, it, it's a lot of the content is photographed on the Epic Destination shoots and it speaks to a very fit physique, kind of more back in the muscle mag and, and oxygen type of uh, physiques that we're all so familiar with from back in the day. So Bodyscape is one machine and Epic Fit is another machine. Epic Fit comes out just a couple times a year, whereas Bodyscape, we try and stay true to that kind of like bi-monthly publication with it. But sometimes it just seems like this is the deal. At the second half of the year, I'm pumping out a lot more magazines and it just seems to work that way. I know it worked that way last year. I think we had, I don't know, Carrie, between Epic Fit and Bodyscape in the second half of the year, we probably put out seven or eight different. <laughs> yeah. It feels like we're doing quite a few now. Like we just put one to press. Yes. I'm scheduling an interview right now with the next one. And then yes. I'm finalizing edits on the previous one. So we're I, right now I'm kind of in the middle of just three to two, like two now in, at the same time, really trying to juggle. Yeah. So, it's like, and I apologize for that because yeah. you just never know how these things are going to go with, yeah. you know, and, and so we're pretty lackadaisical with the schedule, right? We're not super formal with the way that these magazines are released. We need to be um, cognizant of our cover models time. We need to be cognizant of Carrie's schedule, especially now that you've got this super massive big kid job with success <laughs> magazine. and that comes first right so at the end of the day we're all just kind of working with each other's schedules it always works out you know there's no lack of time where we're waiting two months for anyone to get us their cover model interviews but carrie is very specific with these interviews that she gives the models you know because she takes the time she has the courtesy to talk to them beforehand rather than just send them a boilerplate template of here's your 10 random questions that every magazine is sending out. It's not that at all. This is specifically catered to the cover model, that person individual. And in, in, in fact, I can speak on Renee Ryan, that was our cover model from, I don't know, what was that issue 17 or something like that? Yeah. And, and we photographed her in Miami. She's a beautiful girl from Laos. And I did these beautiful, amazing swimwear photos of her on the beach. And it was for the Bodyscape cover. So this was a huge teachable moment in my career. Like maybe talk to the girl first and find out what she wants to talk about on the cover of her magazine for the cover model feature, right? So... Carrie and, and Renee get in contact to do this whole cover model interview deal. And Carrie is like blowing up my phone. I'm missing calls. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh my gosh, I feel so like, why? what's happening? Sarah, this is really important. I needed to call me back right away. And I'm like, okay. So I get on the phone with her and Carrie goes, okay, I know that you can say that anybody can talk about whatever they want to on the pages of Bodyscape, right? But this is extra, extra read all about it. Talk to me, what's going on? So Renee, our wonderful, beautiful cover model, was definitely a tragedy to triumph kind of a story. But as it turns out, she was, you know, part of her story was she was raised in a concentration camp. And I did not have any photos that told that story that led into the cover model feature. And so here we were, we're like, all right, so how are we going to make this one? <laughs> right? And it, it worked out just fine where I had to think of, all right, if I'm Renee, how would I want this story to be introduced based on the photos that we have? It was a separate introduction, okay? So we kind of, it wasn't like a warning, but it was like, we're about to tell this story that's really raw and really true. So get your seatbelts fastened and get into it. This is Renee. 
and we're going to talk about it right now. And Carrie did a beautiful job. She was so eloquent in the interview and, and Renee was very responsive to the way that Carrie had interviewed her. And it was, it just, it turned out to be amazing. It was definitely like a, an up level in what we had to offer, right? Because you don't really think about, well, there's tragedy to triumph, but like not, not that kind of tragedy, yeah. but we're here to talk about it. We'll talk about it and we'll put it on paper if you want to. It's up to you. It really is. It's up to you. I'm not going to sit in there and be in your way of a story that you that you want to tell. I mean, I, I guess I have a few limitations, but at the end of the day, like it's your platform. It's, it's your storytelling platform and we want to get that out there for you. And a lot of these, like I would say Renee's issue too, like it can be a legacy project. She can leave this to her children, her grandbabies, and how she talked about this. And this is a big deal for her and how she's evolved and definitely came out of a concentration camp and became a multi-figure entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think that's part of the whole strategy behind your cover stories, really, because I've learned this when you brought me in, I wasn't sure what kind of stories I was going to get out of um, right. just the talents that you were bringing to the table, because I knew it was a bit of a different um, strategy from other magazines I've worked for because this one was based off of photo shoots that you were booking and working with you. And that was the real pillar of the, the context behind these covers. Um, and then I was, I, I was brought on to bring out the story in, in the different people. And so when I started talking to Renee in particular, um, and she started sharing this incredible story, you know, I was, I, I really approach every single person I interview with a lot of care and a lot of like um, awareness that, okay, they, they are obviously wanting to get a message across, knowing that they're in front of a camera in these glamorous outfits, if not skimpy outfits, whatever kind of outfits they're in, but looking amazing. And now it's my job to bring out the inner beauty in the words. And that was my, that's, that's what I always stick to. So when I talk to people, when I interview them for every cover story, I'm always very cognizant of the fact that I know they want to do this and be out there because they're doing the photo shoot, but how much of their personal story do they want to reveal? And so I'm very aware of that. I'm very, um, uh, I take care with those and I, I really am honored to hear those stories, but I'm also very aware that I will ask them, like, how much of this do you want to reveal in the, in the actual magazine and so right. with Renee she was very open she was like I want to reveal all this because this is my opportunity to get it off my chest this is something I've been wanting to share and then I'm very she was very proud of the photos she took with you so really the connection there it seemed disjointed at first but I also realized that this is her story and now she is where she is looking beautiful and also a, you know being a boss babe in her own entrepreneurial yeah. world so it really did at the end of the day just reflect her and so not every story we reveal is going to go as in depth into like those kind of you know stories um to that level and they don't have to be really everyone is so unique and everyone is complementary to that person right so i think that's the whole benefit of the way you have your magazine set up and the strategy behind them is that People can just be who they want to be and then look amazing. And then I try to bring out the inner beauty as well, which was, is a great compliment, right? To the whole process. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm just grateful that it's you that's unraveling, unraveling you know, the, the onion on, on <laughs> these people. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. I think Thanks. that's awesome. You guys are both amazing boss babes. I mean, I hope that, I mean, you both are very powerful women. You're very focused. You're very strong women but you're very compassionate to the people that you're interviewing and photographing and knowing their backs are. I just hope my daughters are anything close to what you guys are when they get older. So I think you guys do amazing. I'm your great team together. So thank you. The magazine's in good hands. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you, John. No, <laughs> John the magazine's like, in good hands. We don't John take that lightly the, at all. Yeah, he's one of the biggest cheerleaders I've ever had in my life. I swear to God. Like I could, I did, I moved another country away and he's still always checking in. How you doing? You look great. Blah, 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 whatever. Send her you know, hugs all the time. So supportive. And I mean, we haven't really worked closely together. Of course we haven't for years, but you know, that's where you have, that's where, you know, it's not just colleagues you're working with. And I feel this way about you too, Sarah, like you're working, I'm working with friends and, and yeah. friends as well who get you, who will always stay in contact no matter where you go professionally and, bringing you back into professional kind of atmospheres at certain times too. 
it that's what means a lot to me. And so I, I want to thank you both for kind of staying in my life too and, and supporting me along in my journey. So thank you. I'll always be here to support you, Carrie. Always. Yeah, and thank the way you. I look at it, friends will always be in your corner and they'll be your cheerleader. They won't be your competition. So yeah. that's what you're all here for. Yay. Yay. So, I agree. <laughs> well, before we close it off here, because it is getting a little bit into the show, before we close it off, we, as you know, Carrie, in all my shows, we always try and get your last views that you want to get out to the viewers, the last words. We call it here the wow or the words of wisdom. What are your words of wisdom you'd like to give the viewers to end the show with? I think that, I mean, I always say I'm a traditionally trained journalist, but I'm a heartfelt storyteller. That's kind of my tagline. I know that media is getting, like journalists get a bad rap these days. And I, I just want people to be open-minded that sharing your story, whether it's through words or of course photos and or them both together through Sarah's um, publications, it is so um, uh, therapeutic, but it's also something to really be proud of. So I would just basically encourage anyone who has, you know, something, who has some extra money and who wants to do this, to really do it because it really is something that you're going to cherish for the rest of your life. And, you know, like I said, even my platform, redlilylife.com to all of Sarah's, um, you know, publications and platforms, I think we have authenticity behind what we do. And so anyone who comes along and works with us or wants to get involved in any way, I think you're going to really see that in the way that we work with you. So really share your story because it's something to be proud of no matter where you come from. That's my last words. Amen. And that is a awesome. wow moment if I've ever heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm glad you came on. Thank you, John. Thank you, Carrie, oh, for, thank for you guys. both being so awesome and being in my life right now. It's just, I feel so blessed and grateful to know the both of you and to be um, actively working with both of you. Literally, yeah. like this is, this is happening. We're doing things and I'm mm -hmm. grateful for all of it. So thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, guys. I appreciate you having me on. And congratulations on the launch of your podcast. I'm no. so honored. It's so cool, right? <laughs> We're rolling with it. We're having a good exactly. time. Carrie was my first guest on my podcast. So, yep. There we go. That makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Yeah. You're never getting rid of me, John. Never. No, <laughs> don't want to. So, all <laughs> right. You. Until next time, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.